Hello everybody and welcome to another review. Today I'll be reviewing the Riseman G-Shock GW9200. Uh, this is the American version and as you can look in the packaging pretty simple uh, box. It's the uh, black and red and opening up the box you have a little top section here with the manual module number 3147 uh, again this one is the American model. Uh, this gives you um, basically imperial readings as well as uh, foreign worldwide readings very thick manual by the way and of course uh, gives you instructions in all different languages and opening up the lip to get to the bottom and the G-Shock 10 which is all uh, three-dimensional really good look to it nice big red G not too too fancy and of course you have the watch. This watch was just recently released uh, after seeing a lot of pictures of it on the internet, looking at all the features. Uh, definitely had to have one. Really sharp looking watch. I like the curves and the edges. Very aesthetically pleasing to the eye. Uh, if you look around the watch itself, it's got a red button, but the red button is not really thrown out in your face there it uh, kind of just rests on the side indented into the side and you have the red eye here and the red eye gives you the barometer on the inside the red eye has a nice touch of class it's got a good metallic look it's got a pretty decent professional look to it and one of the uh, better things that they added onto this watch over other G-Shocks is a stainless steel light button they did a really good job on that as well it's got the black uh, paint on the inside but it's kind of brushed metal and it's got the screws on the side if you want it to change the band or the bezel. Nice sturdy sensor on the side. Uh, if you look at the Pathfinder watches, they're good watches. They give you obviously the same readings. Uh, the Pathfinders actually give you a compass on top, but this this one's a little more, more sturdy, I feel. It's a more solid watch. But again, it's a G-Shock. You get that uh, G-Shock protection on it. It's very highly shock resistant. And looking on the back, the logo on this watch in this case is the dragon they call it the flying dragon on the Japanese model they give you the flying squirrel so that's how you can decipher between the two and as far as on the wrist very comfortable wears very light I'll probably be wearing this at the office occasionally as well. Doesn't wear ridiculously chunky. It's not extremely large. It's got a nice width to it. And the biggest concern that I had on this one, uh, just like the Frogman, was I am left-handed and I wear my wrist. Uh, I wear it on my right wrist. And I was afraid that the sensor was going to dig into my arm, but that uh, has not been the case. So I've been pretty fortunate with these watches. I, they tend to make these watches ambidextrous for you. And one other feature that I like as far as the physical features is a nice textured band, first of all. I also always like it when they give you the two, uh, the two buckle on there. Nice thickness to it. But they also give you a lip. And the lip is to allow it where the ring doesn't slide around freely and get loose like it does on other watches so that's a nice handy feature as well now going into the features uh, I'm gonna go into the display first really good job on the display like most uh, G-Shocks but this one is a little extra special I think it's actually one of the better modules that they put out there and the reason being is because first of all it displays everything in one shot uh, in the red eye you get the barometer reading at all times you got the day of the week the year, the month, and the day, and you get the time in the seconds, of course. You get 12 and 24 hour format. Um, this is an atomic solar watch, so on the atomic side, it, uh, it can sync up to six different towers throughout the uh, throughout the world. Uh, you got the U.S., Japan, Europe, and they uh, they recently added China to the list there. So that's number one. Number two, it is solar, so it does get its charge by the sun, and it's. Uh, been charged ever since I picked it up 
and going into the features if you push the button on the right it gives you the altimeter reading and when you look into the eye there it's actually uh, setting itself up to, to gauge the pressure of the air to give you the kind of height that you're at and you'll notice there's a little flashing G on the top there that's where you know that it is reading it um, you have the option to figure out the increments that you want it to read I had it uh, read every two seconds you can have it read every two seconds or five seconds and as you're climbing up a mountain you have the ability to record features uh, I'll show you that in a moment um, you can set the altimeter to a uh, certain height so if I'm climbing up and I'm halfway up the mountain I want to start gauging it from that area I could reset the uh, watch to where it would be at zero feet so this way I can start just gauging myself and there's also a timer on it too so it kind of gives you uh, how fast you're traveling up the mountain and how long it's taking you to get there how many feet per uh, second if you will now going into the regular features as well you have the barometer and the barometer gives you the same reading on the side um, you have a choice here you can choose it to read on the graph where the barometer is going up or down the pressure or you can go by an arrow and you can do that with the altimeter function as well so if the weather's declining you'll see the arrow go down if the weather is pretty much stable you'll just see the arrow to point it to the right and if it's increasing you'll see the arrow point up obviously and you can go back and forth not on the main time screen but just within that function itself and it also gives you the temperature gauge as well so uh, the thing about the temperature gauge is you need to make sure it's off your wrist for at least 20 minutes or so so this way it's not reading your body temperature too you get world time You get your 24-hour stopwatch, 24-hour timer, which is a new one. You get your alarm mode, which gives you the hourly time signal. One, two, three, four, four alarms plus snooze. That's that record feature I was telling you about earlier. So if you wanted to record uh, as you're climbing, you could do that and that's it and just to show you as far as the altimeter you press the adjust button and the altimeter like I said it stays steady there and the loom as you can see is pretty bright on it and that's the uh, review of the rise man so uh, if you're not familiar with this watch and you wanted to get an idea of it, I hope I helped you out, especially if you were thinking about buying one. I hope this was a helpful review. And I want to thank you for taking your time to watch my video. And if you get one, I hope you enjoy it. Thank you again. Have a great day.